trainings you may have heard the word beam offset, but what is it, actually? Of course, we are talking about a laser beam that is exposing a part. In reality we have the laser beam and the curing zone. The curing zone is a pool of molten powder around the laser beam which is fluid at first and hardens out after some time. If the laser goes along the actual part contour, the part will be enlarged by the radius of the laser and the curing zone. Ah! That's why the laser beam is offset. Now dimensional accuracy of the part can be achieved. In eSprint, a process software of EOS for building laser center jobs, this is also very good to see. This is the cross-sectional view of a part in eSprint. The beam offset is the distance between the path of the laser beam and the part boundary. Talking about the beam offset, or beam compensation, as it is called in eSprint, there is a global and a part-specific beam compensation. The global beam compensation is applied to the whole job, while the part-specific beam compensation is applied to a specific part. In this example of planet gears, it means that gears with a bigger compensation will be more smooth running than gears with a smaller beam compensation. Here you see a beam compensation of 0.04 mm applied. By enlarging the beam compensation to 0.08 mm the part contour is offset to the part inside, which makes the part smaller. Ok, now you know what the beam offset is. But how do you know the exact value? Let me give you a quick overview of the procedure. A precondition for the following procedure is, of course, that the machine is calibrated and released for production. At EOS, this is done with the QA job. The beam offset depends on factors like the powder material, laser power, layer thickness and more. According default values for each machine and material are stored in so-called material sets in the ESPrint software. Or when using a PSW the beam offset default values are stored in the default job. There are also parameter sheets which contain values to start with. But the beam offset is also machine specific and must be determined for each machine individually. That's why the first step is to build a job so that we can measure the beam offset later on. There are so-called fine-tuning jobs available, like this one for the P396 and PA2200 which exists in many variations for other systems and materials. The fine-tuning values depend very much on the part dimensions, that's why the dimensions and stability of the fine-tuning job should be adjusted as well. The job is then being measured with a CMM or a micrometer screw. You need to measure to an accuracy of at least one hundredth of a millimeter. The measured values are typed in an Excel sheet which calculates the beam offset. In this table you see the value for the updated beam offset. The new global beam offset value is then typed into the PSW or according to the machine type, into EOS print. The last step is of course, to check whether the beam offset is correct. So you build a job again, measure it, and see whether it is dimensional accurate. So this is the basic idea of how to find out the beam offset. If you would like to learn more about this fascinating technology, our Additive Minds Academy experts are happy to help you out.